These are real wisdom and light carriers, which the world needs. We need this message now. What we need is Hawaiian wisdom because it's critically important. This is my way of making a difference and I'm only one tiny little artist seeking to do as big a project and make as big a difference as I can. Aloha. My name is Callie O'Neill, and I am the Kona Airport mural artist uh, with my Malama Aina mural. Like, I fell in love with public art. It's like I wanted to make a difference. I knew that. I wanted to make a difference, and the skill set that I was born with or given, I wanted to serve with this gift. It's 321 feet long, and it's connected by a thin blue line, which represents sacred water. Kule Keakelana said, you need a thin blue line that runs through the mural, and that's water. That's life. That everything is connected by the waters. And also the thin blue line of the biosphere, what Ellis and Onizuka could see from outer space as all of life on Earth. And what the astronauts see is the membrane of all life called the thin blue line. The thin blue line that is running through the mural now is both for the water, Kavai Ola, you know, the sacred water, and the, and the atmosphere, the ha, aloha, and the face of breath. There's eight walls and each one is another aspect, like Makavalu, a, a different aspect of aloha aina, the activation of which is malama aina, to take care of. And the kupuna guiding the mural all insisted you got to connect the walls expressing the activation of the heart of the Hawaiian culture, which is aloha aina, love of the land. Aloha aina, aloha to me is the field, breath, space, the atmosphere, the gentle spirit. But malama is the activation of it. Let's do that. So many different kupuna guiding you because there's eight different walls. They all must be saying different things. I said, no, they're all saying the same thing. And I just had so much fun in this big meeting at the big round board table. It's like, oh no, you're completely wrong. They all said the same thing. Take care of life. Of course they did. This is the time, this critical turning point in our history where we all need to awaken to take care of the earth. The mural is like, wake up but so gentle, a wake up call. That's what the mural's about. What's the most important thing for all of us to contemplate, to think and speak of and act on is taking care of life itself. And that was my only question. It's like, what's the most important thing that you wanna say to three, three to four million passers-by every year? It's like, take care of the earth, take only what's needed and take care of everything else. The roots of ecology comes from indigenous wisdom. And the indigenous people, like my job is to stand behind the indigenous people and use my skills. And, you know, I'm grateful beyond words that the kupuna trust me enough to like, okay, they trust that I'm, you know, I'm not, ex I'm not here to exploit any knowledge. However, the knowledge has to come out to people. And the cats in the cradle and the suit. I studied and earned a master's degree in social ecology. I went from my love of gardening and intensive food growing to becoming an activist with the singer-songwriter Harry Chapin in New York and founded his first organizational branch, the World Hunger Year of New Jersey, to, through education and consciousness raising, bring an end to world hunger. When I came to Hawaii, I immediately um, started dancing hula with Bretta Frank Hewitt on Oahu, who I became very close to and very deeply respectful of. It occurred to me then that the culture was awake to life and revered life. And it was like, this is a culture that I can relate to. To the point where when I got my first commission at the University of Hawaii, Manoa, double-walled, huge murals, Hawaii Ka'ukumu. 
Hawaii is my teacher, a mural on the spirit of growth and learning then and now. It was the 75th anniversary of the university they were commissioning a mural. Brother Frank Hewitt was the one that guided me through that mural. I could see that the Hawaiian people were living oneness with the land. So Auntie Rachel Naki, pure Hawaiian from Molokai, that I was brought to meet her by um, Emma, Dr. Emma Aluli. She's 16 feet tall. You know, I, I enlarged her hand, was to catch attention to the culture, that the culture is alive, the stories are still being told. So the mural at the university is one of the things that the committee from the State Foundation on Culture and the Arts showed me. We want this at the Kona Airport. We want some big figures. The name of the mural is Eola Kahonua, O Vau Kahonua. So it's long live the earth, I am the earth. Which in times gone by, I thought was a poetic expression of the Hawaiian people. Until like Pomai, you know, Bertelman and other teachers, they were, this is not just poetic, Kelly. You know, they were kinder than saying that way, but just to share with me, you eat from this earth, you breathe this air, you more than half of your breath comes from the ocean, the other half from the forest. You are this land. Everything I wanted to know is within the Hawaiian culture's wisdom and tech. It's, it's an acronym, T-E-K, traditional ecological wisdom, which is the wisdom of the culture because all indigenous cultures are place-based. And so the land is the, the oneness, you know, with the divine and humanity and the earth. And then how could I serve? There were a few people I knew had to be on the mural, like Kumu Keala Ching and Hannah Springer. And slowly, this group of powerful, worldly, deeply cultural practitioners, teachers, wisdom, and light carriers came together. I am standing in front of wall one with two amazing kupuna. On my right, this is Kumu Keala Ching and Earl Regador, Uncle Earl. And Keala instructed me, as have all these kupuna, that the eight walls of the mural must begin with aloha and end with aloha. And you must picture this as a circle, just like the mountains appear. Everything is a cycle, everything is a circle. It's breath, ha, in the face, aloha, in the face of this moment, this breath. And that means it's life. Keal is representing the more the kahiko. Earl's looking straight at you, you know, with his beautiful ukulele, singing to contemporary. What Earl instructed me for the mural was very simple. Callie, show them what was, what can be, and what must be again. So we start here. The next wall is Eola Kavaiola, O Vau Kavaiola. So long live the waters. So Hannah Springer and her son Keikau Liketomek are standing for the waters. Hannah pours water to the hands of her son Keikau Like, and that connects to the waters that flow through the mural. Each kupuna is standing for what they wanted to stand for. The message is now we all must become water conservers and water protectors to plant more of the native plants. That's the message, take care of the waters. And we realize that water is so precious. I'd studied the integration of social ecology as human interaction. So I already had a deep foundation in deep ecology to come to Hawaii and find people that had roots and a legacy that was ongoing. Welcome to wall three, the oceans. Honored to be standing here with the Moana Ohana, ocean defenders, ocean protectors. In this January, Hawaii became the first state to ban the killing of sharks. That's their work. Not only their work, many people worked on that, but we were also the first state to ban shark finning. These are the kind of kupuna that are on the mural, like really working, working to preserve life on earth. And we have life on earth because of our oceans. The 71% of the whole earth 
is the ocean. And the ocean is so deep and so vast that it comprises 99% of all the living space. So standing here is Papa Ling Nakachi. He posed for this portrait and is no longer here on Earth. He's watching over us. And then his son, Mike Nakachi, and two grandchildren, Kakea and Alohi. And what they've been contributing to and instrumental in is protecting and preserving sharks. And the Moana Ohana was instrumental in the legislation where Hawaii is now the first state in the nation to ban the killing of sharks. These are kupuna that are deeply connected to the land near the airport. So many are lineal descendants or just closely associated with the land. Their auntie, Pilahi Paki, was the one who wrote the spirit of aloha law into the Hawaiian constitution. I mean, it's, it's legislated. We, everyone here has to live aloha. You know, the Hawaiians have taught me like, these trees, this ground, these stones are your makua. You know, they're your parents there. And I thought that was beautiful and poetic. And they're like, it's real. We are one with the earth or we could not have the atmosphere to breathe. So we celebrate the forest. That's the fourth wall. What was really telling to me in my early and extensive interviews with all the kupuna guiding the mural is that they all wanted to stand for the forest. Here we have Yvonne and Kiyoki Carter Carver. They are representing the dry land forest. All of Hawaii was a forest. We've lost 97% of our dry land forests and almost half the mesic forests. And we need to plant by the millions and millions trees and people are learning how to do this. So that's part of what the mural wants to do. It's like support these people doing the great work. Waikoloa Dry Forest, the Mauna Kea Forest Preserve, you know, Kaupulehu. Um, wherever there's a reforestation project, that's what we need. This is the Voyager's Wall. Without the forest, there are no voyagers. Exemplified in the Olelo Noyao, he va'a he moku, he moku, he va'a. Their canoe was like an island. They had what they had aside from fishing and catching rainwater. So everyone shared equally. No one took too much. Pomai Bertelman, who's here with Chad Paishan and her uncle Shorty Bertelman. The earth is our island one living planet spinning in space that we're all together, one community, one race. And their voyage as well, you know, the Malama Honua worldwide voyage went where celestial navigators never went from Hawaii and circumnavigated the entire globe. The most remarkable navigators. And what Nainoa Thompson had said was, we spent the first 40 years of the Hawaiian Renaissance showing we were the best mariners in the world. Now we also must show that we're the best land stewards. Standing here at wall six, the Keakealani Ohana. Kule is pouring water to the hands of the next generation, pouring the wisdom, because the wisdom of the kupuna is that mana that throughout time allowed the younger generations to have the benefit and the richness of their home oku auhau, their legacy. And so this is the culture wall. It symbolizes knowledge, you know, the wisdom that's timeless. So that runs through the culture, which is the language and the life ways, the values that are so important. And the message always is that the culture is based on the life of the land. And that's what we want to restore. Also here, representing Kamehameha, is the Io, the Hawaiian hawk. So to preserve the culture is an essential aspect of preserving the wisdom and the language. But this culture is also special, you know, this, this has got a very special quality and wisdom. I'm standing in front of wall seven, and this is the food wall about the canoe plants and fishing. Growing kalo and growing fish, and then also Junior catching the fish. So that one is Loke Ruth Alawa, and I'm reminded 
of being told that not all kupuna are elders and not all elders are kupuna. That sometimes there's very young people that are wise before their time, as is Loke Ruth Alawa, who is Koia, a tender of a pond, and also a horticulturist. She was Kia'i Loko, guardian of that pond. So she's representing both the cultivation of taro, which she does on the Puna side, and then her work at Koloko Pond. And here we have Clayton Punihaole and Junior Kanuha. Neither of them is present on earth anymore. But Clayton represents a whole class of people who are often not honored. He was a blind horticulturist, a gardener, farmer. And when he became blind, his family put strings along the terraces in his garden so he could walk along and pour his energy back into the earth to give back. And the mural would not be complete without Junior Kanuha. And my understanding is Junior was so generous to the kupuna when he would come in from fishing he would give fish to all the kupuna that were around, and he was among the first sacred activists of the land, protecting the mountain, protecting the ocean, speaking out for the reef. Really extraordinary people. And then the last is Aloha for Future Generations. In a very real way, I believe that Aloha can and will save the world. This is aloha for future generations, the perpetuation of this kind and gentle spirit, which I truly believe if we live that and we share as the kupuna ask us to, this gentle, kind, humble, respectful, generous spirit of life to all of nature and everyone we meet, everything's going to be okay. So it's represented here by the beloved Reggie Lee. And Reggie Lee is there with his grandson. Reggie is kupuna wisdom carrier for Kohanaiki and also a lineal descendant of that land. His mom, Auntie uh, Elizabeth Maluihi Lee, who almost single-handedly brought back the art of very fine weaving. So this is a prayer. The whole mural is a visual prayer for the perpetuation of a healthy and beautiful future. The kupuna that are on the mural, they're very, very humble people. It's not like they want to be on a mural. There's such a, a true ha'a ha'a, this humility, that they'd rather be doing their work teaching, but they recognize that the state of nature and our relationship with nature is so stressed that it is time to step forward. But the mural is not about them. And that's something that they made very clear. There could be other kupuna on the mural. This happens to be a very worldly, highly educated in both their mo'oku au you know, their genealogical roots, and, you know, Western academic culture. So, so the knowledge is seeking to come out and affect people. That's the point. It's not decorative. You know, the mural is there to communicate with a simple message of wherever you are, with whatever you have, do everything you can, as long as you can, with as much heart and love as you can. Now, you know, do something. The Hawaiians, when they felt my urgency, like for example, Yvonne Carter would say, Callie, like kind of like a slow down. You got to think in tree time. You think in forest time. Think more like a mountain, you know, just it's going to take time. It's going to take time for us to come into harmony. That's what it's done is help me slow down and deepen, you know, my conviction of the heart that this is my way of making a difference. And I'm only one tiny little artist from a tiny town seeking to do as big a project and make as big a difference as I can, you know, and I've got to just, ah. <sighs> It's like it's going to be okay. I want to make a difference in the world. Mm -hmm.